Good morning. The April 19th, 2023 meeting of the Board of Estimates is now called to order. Uh, we ask that folks uh, who are participating uh, with us in person to ensure that your phones or electronic devices are turned off or at a minimum placed on silence so we do not interrupt today's proceedings. We'll also ask um, that the mandate is still in effect. All folks that are um, with us today uh, have a mask on, this mask in the back. Uh, the board is uh, fully vaxxed as well as boosted and until uh, the order is lifted, uh, we will continue to proceed as the administration has asked us to do so. Uh, at this time, I would like to ask our amazing clerk, Ms. Celeste Amato, for any corrections, additions, or noted abstentions to today's agenda. Madam Clerk, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President, and good morning, everyone. This morning, we have uh, quite a few changes to the agenda that are being presented as an addendum. If you go online later, you can see all of these details. Um, I have quite a few items to read in. Um, these are predominantly procurement items, and this is all part of our transition to a new automated system, and we are, we are getting that working increasingly smoothly, but we have a few things that needed to move on from a slightly different path this morning. So bear with me, um, refill your coffee, and I'll get through these items as fast as we can. So the, the first item this morning is SB 11321. The action requested of the board is to approve an award of solicitation number 08000, Supplies and Reagents with Hologic Sale and Service, Inc. at 24506 Newton Place, Chicago, Illinois, 60673. The period of the agreement is April 1st, 2023 through March 31st, 2026. And this request meets the condition that there is no advantage in seeking competitive responses. The amount and source of funds is $250,000. Item SB 2311333, action requested of the board is to approve an increase of contract number 08000, Power DMS cloud-based software to Power DMS, located at 101 South Garland Avenue, Orlando, Florida. The contract expires April 19, 2024. No, re no renewal option is available. The transaction amount is $55,452.62. Next item is SB 2311335. This is an informal award. Uh, RFQ 000204, Lactation Station to Nestle LLC at 195 Church Street, Florida, uh, 15th, Church Street, 15th, Florida, New Haven, Connecticut. This is a one-time purchase and the transaction amount is $27,625. Up next is SB 2311340. The board is requested to approve an extension of Montgomery County contract number 1110661, Fire Department Tools, Equipment, Hoses, and Appliances to Atlantic Emergency Solutions, Inc. at 12351 Randolph Ridge Lane, Manassas, Virginia. The period of the agreement is March 29th, 2023 through March 30th, 2024 with no renewal option remaining. The amount and source of funds is $100,000. The next item is SB 2311343. The action requested of the board is to approve a ratification and renewal of contract B5000-6375, polymeric flocculant for gravity belt thickening facility at the Back River Wastewater Treatment Plant to Polydyne Incorporated, located at 1 Chemical Road, Riceboro, Georgia. Ratification period covered is January 19th, 2023 through April 18th, 2023. The renewal period covered is April 19th, 2023 through January 18th, 2024, with two one-year renewal options remaining. This request meets the condition that there is no advantage in seeking competitive responses. The amount and source of funds is $1,233,720. SB 2311345, the board is requested to approve an award of solicitation number RFQ 000165, Efficient Light Control Services to Zero Draft, Maryland, 1850 York Road, Lutherville, Maryland. The period of the agreement is April 19th, 2023 through April 20th, 2026 with two one-year renewal options. The amount of this transaction is $412,500. Up next is SB 2311349. 
The board is requested to approve renewal of contract number 08000 OEM parts and repair service for pavement marking equipment on MB Company's pavement marking truck body. Sorry about that. There's a repeat in the wording. The, this, the company is MB Company's pavement marking truck body at 1615 Wisconsin Avenue, New Holstein, Wisconsin. The renewal, the renewal period covered is April 8th, 2023 through April 7th, 2024 with one one-year renewal option remaining. This meets the conditions that there is no advantage in seeking competitive responses. The amount of this transaction is $50,000. SB 231352, the board is requested to approve a renewal of contract number 08000, OEM repair parts for Nova Buses with Nova Bus Inc. at 260 Banker Road, Plattsburgh, New York. The period covered is May 13, 2023 through May 12, 2024, with one one-year renewal option remaining. This request meets the condition that there is no advantage in seeking competitive responses. The amount of this transaction is $0. SB 231354, the board is requested to approve a renewal of contract number B5005992, welding equipment and supplies with Air Gas USA LLC at 259 North Radnor Chester Road, Radnor, Pennsylvania. The period covered is April 22nd, 2023 through April 21st, 2024, with one one-year renewal option remaining. The amount of this transaction is $0. SB 231163, the action requested of the board is to approve a renewal of contract number B5005779, liquid chlorine to the vendors listed below. The period, is, the period of the agreement is June 1st, 2023 through May 31st, 2024, with one one-year renewal option remaining. This request meets the condition that there is no advantage in seeking competitive responses. Supply of liquid chlorine in one ton containers, supply of liquid chlorine in 150 pound cylinders from Kuhn Chemical Company, Inc., Univar Solution, USA, Inc. And uh, that company is in South Kearney, New Jersey, and um, re respectively, the second is in Morrisville, Pennsylvania. The amount of the transaction is $200,000. Next is SB 231136. The board is requested to approve a renewal of contract number B5005677, polymer for sludge dewatering to Polydyne Incorporated at One Chemical Plant Road, Riceboro, Georgia. The period covered is March 25th, 2023 through March 24th, 2024, and this is the final renewal. This transaction amount is $250,000. Up next is SB 231367. The board is requested to approve an increase award for contract number SCON 001760 annual maintenance on security cameras with Stanley Convergence Security at 6955 Golden Ring Road, Baltimore, Maryland. This contract expires on August 31st, 2023 with three one-year renewal options remaining. The amount, the amount of this transaction is $19,320.46. SB 231-1371, the board is requested to approve an award of contract number 08000, supply of two easy to connect extraction robots, service agreements, installation and training, and connectivity package to Kiagen LLC, located at 19300 Germantown Road, Germantown, Maryland. This is a one-time purchase arrangement. This request meets the condition that there is no advantage in seeking competitive responses. The transaction amount is $162,167.39. SB 2311377, the board is requested to approve an award of contract number 06000, DocuSign Enterprise License with Kerasoft at 11493 Sunset Hills Road, Suite 100, Reston, Virginia. The period covered is from April 19th, 2023 through April 20th, 2024. This, meets, this request meets the condition that there is no advantage in seeking competitive responses. The transaction amount is $48,929.74. SB 231378, the board is requested to approve a ratification and extension of State of Maryland contract number 001B840047, Life Pack 15 defibrillators, equipment and accessories with Stryker Sales Corporation 
at 2020 at 2825 Airview Boulevard, Kalamazoo, Michigan. The ratification period is July 2nd, 2022 through April 18th, 2023. The extension period is April 19th, 2023 through June 30th, 2023. The amount of this transaction is $600,000. That concludes the walk-ons and thank you to the board and audience for your patience as I read through all of that. Up next, we have the following protest slash statement of opposition to note on page 128 through 129, SB 2311213, Department of Real Estate Land Disposition Agreement for Roundview Road. A statement of opposition was received from Edward Prince. We have the following deferrals and withdrawals to note this morning. On page 63, item SB 2311173, ARPA Grant Agreement, Enoch Pratt Free Library, Digital Equity. This item is being withdrawn at the request of the Mayor's Office of Recovery Programs. On page 97, SB 2311374, formal award of source well contract number 01052. Playground and water play equipment and related accessories and services, number 0186. This item is being withdrawn at the request of Recreation and Parks. The following items <coughs> are being moved to the non-routine agenda. Pages 4 through 5, SB 2311181, Baltimore Development Corporation, Fourth Amendment to Lease Agreement for Harbor Place. On page 6, SB 2311324, Bureau of Budget Management Research, Fiscal 2024, Preliminary Budget Transmittal. And on page 128 through 129, SB 2311213, Department of Real Estate Land Disposition Agreement for Roundview Road, a statement of opposition was received, again from Edward Prince. Um, the following items are being requested to move to the routine agenda. We are requesting that the walk-on procurement items just read into the record by the clerk be moved to the routine agenda this morning. We have the following abstentions to note. And pardon me for just one moment. The Honorable Mayor Brandon Scott is abstaining on pages 31, SB 2310909, Health Department, Johns Hopkins University, Pediatrics, Ryan White Part B Outpatient. On page 34, SB 2310900, Health Department, ratification to an amendment, Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine, Division of Infectious Disease. On page 36, SB 2310866, Health Department, ratification 40469, Johns Hopkins Harriet Lane. On page 40, SB 2311159, Health Department, agreement, Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine, Transfer of Operation of School-Based Health Center and School Suites at KIPP Ujima, KIPP Harmony. The Honorable President Nick Mosby has no abstentions this morning. The Honorable Comptroller Bill Henry is abstaining on travel requests as follows. Page 7, SB 2311255. Pages 8 through 9, SB 2311387 and SB 2311422. On pages 15 through 17, SB 2311475, SB 2311476, and SB 2311473. On page 39, SB 2311468. On pages 51 through 54, SB 2311316, SB 2311312. On pages 57 through 58, SB 2311474 and SB 2311466. On pages 84 through 85, SB 2311090. On pages 91 through 93, SB 2311465, SB 2311464, and SB 2311463. On page 153, SB 2311470. Again, those were all um, travel requests from which the Comptroller is abstaining. For City Solicitor Ebony Thompson, we have the following abstentions on page 51 through 52, SB 2311316, Department of Law travel request, and on page 53 through 54, SB 2311312, Department of Law travel request. And for the Director of Public Works, Jason Mitchell, we have no abstentions to note this morning. We also have the following no votes to um, Note for the routine agenda, the Honorable President Nick Mosby is voting no on the following items. Page 63, SB 2311173, Mayor's Office of Recovery Programs, ARPA Grant Agreement, Enoch Pratt Free Library Digital. 
Page 64, SB 231127, Amendment Guaranteed Income Pilot Grant Cash Agreement Campaign of Maryland, Inc. Page 65, SB 231043, Mayor's Office of Recovery Programs Grant Agreement with Parity Baltimore, Inc. for Parity times the SOS Fund, Preventing Home Loss of Baltimore's Most Precious Residents. Page 66 through 67, SB 231150, Mayor's Office of Recovery Programs, Grant Agreement with Leaden Hall Baptist Church for Pantry Project. Page 81, SB 231937, Mayor's Office of Recovery Programs, Roca Baltimore LLC, Subrecipient Grant Agreement with, for ARPA. Page 83, SB 231183, Mayor's Office of Recovery Programs, ARPA Associated Catholic Charities, Inc. Page 86, SB 231271, Department of Planning, Grant Expenditure Grant Agreement. Page 87, SB 231087, Department of Planning, ARPA, Harbor Hospital Agreement. And that was the final no vote for Council President on the routine agenda. And we have um, no additional notations for this morning. Thank you so much for your patience. Thank you so much, uh, <coughs> Madam Clerk. Uh, I just want to point out uh, at the beginning of the um, opening statement, um, Madam Clerk read off a slew of walk-on items. Um, you know, this was a procedural thing uh, that we're going to allow one time in working with the administration. Um, obviously, walk-on items should be uh, reserved for things that are urgent or emergencies. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure and make that clear for the record. Uh, for the folks in our listening audience and the folks who are attending with us today. With that, um, at this time, um, I'll ask for a motion to approve and adopt the open, opening statement. So moved. Second. It's been moved and probably seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The opening statement has been adopted. Um, I would now would like to direct the board's attention uh, to a memorandum from my office dated April 17, 2023, identifying matters to be considered as routine agenda items together with any corrections, additions, abstentions, and no votes that have been noted by our amazing clerk. At this point, I'll entertain a motion to approve all items contained in the routine agenda. So moved. Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The routine agenda has been adopted. The first item on the non-routine agenda can be found on pages four and five. That's SB 231181, Baltimore Development Corporation. This request is to approve a fourth amendment to a lease agreement with MCP HP Baltimore LLC, successor in interest to Ashkenazi Acquisition Corporation LLC for Harbor Place. On behalf of the Baltimore Develop Development Corporation. We have Mr. President and CEO. Good morning, board. Uh, my name is Colin Tarbert. I'm the President and CEO of the Baltimore Development Corporation. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. Um, we are presenting the Fourth Amendment to what we would call the Harbor Place Lease Agreement. Um, and so uh, I will go give you some background on um, the lease where we are and what this amendment does and what it means, I think, for, for the city as a whole, and then happy to answer any questions for you. Um, so as, as you all know, the Harbor Place development and the lease was approved originally by the city dating back to 1979. Uh, for the last couple years, the, the property has been, I think, in, in limbo is a nice way to put it. Um, unfortunately, a sale that took place several years ago to the Ashkenazi Acquisition Corporation or company um, has not panned out to be what we would want it to be. Um, they haven't been uh, good actors, um, to, to summarize it. And so that led to the property actually falling into receivership. And so um, for the last couple of years, it's been in a state of receivership. Baltimore Development Corporation has been working uh, in good partnership with the receiver to kind of figure out a path forward for the properties. It's really critical to our downtown. It is, you know, the, the center in many ways of, of the city. Um, and so in uh, September of 2022, um, there was a motion filed in the circuit court of Baltimore City for the sale of Harbor Place to a new owner. Um, and that, that proposed owner is MCBHP 
Baltimore LLC, which we would know as um, MCB Realty, headed up by Dave Bramble, a uh, local developer and property owner here in the city, uh, which we think is, is a great step forward. And so we've been supportive of that. And late last year, December 16th of 2022, uh, the court granted the, mo the, the sale uh, uh, to, to MCB in, in short. And so um, with the court's approval of, of the sale, we then began discussions with the developer uh, to enter into what is before you today for consideration, which is the Fourth Amendment to the, to the original lease. Uh, and what this does is this allows us to officially now move forward with the reimagining and the redeveloping of Harbor Place. Uh, so today, I think the, the document itself is pretty straightforward. It's not uh, overly complicated or controversial, uh, but today is a milestone really in what has been um, somewhat of a saga of, of Harbor Place. And so I think today's a really exciting moment, even though the Fourth Amendment might not be the most exciting thing on the agenda today. Um, so let me just give you a quick rundown of what the amendment does, and then I'll take any questions for you. Um, so one, it, it consents to the assignment of the lease to uh, MCB. It will waive, waive any defaults or existing defaults under the lease for what we're calling the development period, which is basically uh, presuming approval today would be from today for, for a three-year period. Um, there's no existing defaults under the lease, but I think this just makes sure that um, they're not inheriting anything that uh, they did not cause. Um, three, we'll abate the rent um, owed to the city under the lease for the development period, so for the next three years. Uh, the, develop, the developer, in furtherance of the goal of community engagement, will endeavor to create a program for um, different sort of pop-ups to activate the space, knowing that you know, we're in this transition period. Um, it will also maintain Harbor Place uh, essentially in the same uh, condition that it is now, which is not obviously the, the condition that we would want it in, um, but it doesn't make sense to make a lot of capital improvements to the property until we know uh, what the final plan is. Um, and then lastly, we'll be working in good faith with the developer uh, on the redevelopment plan, um, which obviously will be a very public process. We'll go through a period of um, <coughs> review and design and engagement, uh, which we anticipate to be about two years, but we've given ourselves three years uh, in the agreement to, to carry out that process. Um, so that, in summary, is the amendment before you today, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. At this time, are there any questions for BDC? You, you hit them all. <laughs> Uh, hearing and seeing none, um, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. This item is approved. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Uh, moving on to our next item on the non routine agenda can be found on page 6, SB 2311324. This request is to note the capital budget plan for fiscal year 2024 of the preliminary budget. On behalf of the Bureau of Budget and Management Research, we have... The director, madam. Good morning. Good morning, board. Uh, thank you for having me today. I'm Laura Larson, director of the Bureau of Budget Management Research. So I'm here today to uh, talk with you about the formal transmission of the fiscal 24 preliminary budget. Just a reminder, the budget was released to the public on Thursday, April 6th, um, and can be viewed on the BBMR website, which is uh, bbmr.baltimorecity.gov. The, um, the operating plan uh, for this year's budget is uh, just over $4 billion. Is uh, $4.35 billion. Of that, the operating budget represents uh, $3.47 billion, and the ca total capital plan uh, represents $887.8 million. Uh, the general fund share of this year's budget is uh, $2.2 billion, an increase of about 5.5%. Um, in terms of the preliminary budget, the preliminary budget uh, balanced a $64 million budget gap that was driven primarily by the higher than anticipated local share of costs for Baltimore City Public Schools. 
On the revenue side, we continue to see overall growth and strength in the city's tax base. The two largest uh, revenue sources in the city's general fund are both projected to increase in fiscal 24. Property taxes are projected to increase by 2.8% or $29 million, while income taxes are projected to increase by 3.9% or $16.7 million. As has been the city's practice for a number of years, the operating budget is presented by the five pillars of the mayor's action plan, prioritizing our youth, building public safety, clean and healthy communities, equitable neighborhood development, responsible stewardship of city resources. Um, I will walk through each of these and give a, a quick highlight. On prioritizing our youth, as I mentioned, we are the preliminary budget provides $392.6 million for the Baltimore City Public Schools, uh, representing the city's local share of costs. This is consistent with the required funding level as established in the state education formula. In the first two years since the implementation of the blueprint, the city's funding for our local schools has increased by $129.1 million. Based on the preliminary budget, the city's contribution for schools will represent 18% of general fund expenditures in fiscal 24. In building public safety, the preliminary budget proposes utilizing long-term vacant positions in the police department to expand the victim service program. The budget also pro proposes creating four additional positions in the fire department focused on safety as a response to recommendations from the Board of Inquiry report uh, regarding the 2022 Stricker Street fire. In, cleaner, in clean and healthy communities, the budget provides funding for 10 crews in the Department of Public Works to stabilize service delivery for solid waste. The budget also continues funding for the CDL incentive program that was passed by the Board of Estimates in March of 2023. The preliminary budget also makes an investment in services for the city's older adults by expanding staffing at the city's senior centers by seven to 10 positions and funding a position uh, in the mayor's office that will begin the planning efforts for the standalone office of aging uh, focused on streamlining uh, services for the city's older adults. In equitable neighborhood development, there are additional positions being added to the Office of Equity and Civil Rights, focused on expanding the city's equity work and completing the citywide equity assessment. The preliminary budget also recommends the creation of the Mayor's Office of Business Advocacy and Development as a standalone agency. This team will be focused on providing small minority women and owned businesses with equitable access to contracting opportunities and capital. The preliminary budget adds over $2.7 million to expand the efforts of this agency. In stewardship of city resources, the budget steps up the city's investment in our fleet by increasing the annual funding for equipment replacement from $26 million to $35 million. In closing, I'd like to remind the board of some upcoming dates regarding the fiscal 24 budget. Next Wednesday, there are two special sessions of the BOE for further discussions on the budget. Both of these um, sessions will take place on the 26th. First, we'll have a formal hearing of the Board of Estimates at 10 a.m. During this briefing, BBMR will provide a detailed overview of the recommendations and assumptions that are reflected in the preliminary budget. Agency heads and their designees will be present at that meeting. Later that evening, we will hold our annual BOE Taxpayer Night, where residents will have the opportunity to come and share their thoughts and feedback regarding the recommendations in the Fiscal 24 preliminary budget. On May the 10th, we will return to present the final recommendations, the final recommended budget to the Board of Estimates, and then the budget will be passed over to the City Council for their oversight and review. For those looking for more detail on the budget, after the Board adjourns today, we will be posting, our, our, again, our full publication is available at bbmr.baltimorecity.gov. We encourage folks to read the publication and reach out to my team for any questions or clarifications regarding the fiscal 24 budget. That concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much, Madam Director. At this point, are there any questions or concerns for BBMR? Ms. Comptroller? Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Would this be a good time to plug taxpayers night for next Wednesday night? Yes, this would be great. So um, taxpayer night will take place um, next Wednesday. Uh, it's a uh, hybrid meeting, so residents can either uh, participate uh, in person here in BOE Chambers and City Hall, or they can uh, participate and register to uh, provide feedback and testimony online. 
Um, at the at the taxpayer night, there will be an opportunity um, where I will be giving a, a short overview um, regarding um, just what is in the fiscal 24 budget. We'll also be joined by our colleagues from the Department of Planning who will be able to speak in detail about what is in the recommendations reflected in the capital budget. Um, the taxpayer, taxpayer night um, takes place at 6 p.m. next Wednesday. And that's here, right? We're yeah. Yeah, doing in the stream. And um, I know we're having a special board of estimates meeting next Wednesday morning at 10 a.m., not our usual starting time of 9 a.m., but 10 a.m. And that is an opportunity, I know, for the board to ask questions about the budget and um, agency heads would be available. Is that open for public participation or just to watch? Um, members of the, uh, members, that isn't, it, it's an open meeting of the, no. Yeah, I mean, but uh, clearly it's an open meeting, so yeah. members of the public can come and participate. However, at that time, that's the opportunity for the board to deal directly with the administration and ask questions. Okay, right, yeah. so, uh, so if people have questions um, they can ask those at taxpayers night that's correct okay so right. taxpayers night is the opportunity for uh, them to uh, pose questions and provide oppositions and concerns uh, it will not be an opportunity for uh, direct agency heads or the administration to provide responses at that time so uh, I guess to your concern and to your point uh, we'll ask the general public if there are uh, burning questions or concerns that you might have uh, it's important to uh, reach out to uh, representatives of board of estimates uh, we can package that up uh, okay. for our special meeting at 10 o'clock uh, and then again you'll be provided the opportunity to come and vocalize those concerns or questions at six o'clock uh, but again it's important to note that there will not be a direct um, uh, uh, exchange of dialogue between uh, the administration and the general public at that time okay thank, thank you both <laughs> Are there any additional questions or concerns? Hearing and seeing none, thank you so much. We uh, put this as noted. Um, next up, uh, we on our NARM routine agenda, We can uh, the next item can be found on page 128, SB 2311213. Uh, this request is for the board uh, to, pro to approve land disposition agreement to sell the property containing the former Pimlico Elementary School at 844 Roundview Road in Cherry Hill Community uh, to the Cherry Hill Community Development Corporation. Uh, the board received a statement of opposition to this item uh, from Eduard Prince, um, if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly, please correct me when it's your time to speak. Uh, and that will be at, and that's why I was added to this uh, non-routine agenda. Uh, first from the Department of Real Estate, uh, we will have uh oh, we have our amazing clerk who's representing uh, real estate today. So, Madam Clerk, if you could please read in real estate's position. I'm happy to share that. I'm also happy to take the podium if that's less confusing. <laughs> no, I think we're okay. We we can work through that. Good morning, everyone. Um, you all know me mostly as the clerk to the board. I'm also the comptroller's chief of staff, and the Department of Real Estate reports to me. And um, our real estate officer, um, his last day was last Friday, Andy Frank. We're already oh, we missing know that. him. Okay. And I am the interim real estate officer until we identify his replacement. So I'm here this morning to share some information about this transaction for Patapsco Elementary School at 844 Roundview Road. This is a land disposition agreement. The city is proposing to sell the 5.1 acre parcel known as the former Patapsco Elementary School located at 844 Roundview Road in the Cherry Hill community to the Cherry Hill Community Developments Corporation. CHDC's development team proposes to demolish the former Patapsco Elementary School and develop new construction, mixed income, mixed use community. All of the 120 new units will be leased to households that earn up to 80% of the Baltimore AMI. The proposed development is consistent with the, two, with the 2020 Cherry Hill Transformation Plan, the master plan completed by the Cherry Hill community and adopted by the Planning Commission in April 2020. The total cost estimate is $32,809,182, and the construction will begin about two years after Board of Estimates approval. Currently, the South Baltimore Adult High School operates from the former Patapsco building. The program has been in the Cherry Hill community for two years and focuses on removing the barriers to achieving economic self-sufficiency for low-income individuals through education and employment. 
MAHS will relocate from the building at the end of this school year and will move back into the new building upon completion. The city will sell the property for $276,000, which will cover the balance of unpaid bond debt service owed by the city to the state of Maryland. The property appraised for $400,000, but the developer cannot afford to pay the full appraised value, demolish the school, and construct an apartment building affordable to households at 80% of AMI or less. By selling the building for less than appraised value, the city is supporting and facilitating a central feature of the community master plan by narrowing the funding gap. And that is that concludes our summary. Thank you. At this time, are there any questions or concerns for the Comptroller's Office? Hearing and seeing none, I do see uh, Mr. Prince online. If we could uh, elevate Mr. Prince so he has an opportunity to provide uh, his concerns to the board. Uh, good morning, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Prince. If I didn't uh, yeah. uh, pronounce your name correctly, please uh, pronounce it correctly for the record. Yeah, it's close enough. It's, right. uh, it's uh, Edward Prince. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now's yeah, your opportunity um, to speak, Mr. Prince. Um. Yeah, I, I was just brought into this situation, so I don't know a lot of details about the background, but this was a closed door deal done by the um, previous mayor's administration. Um, Terry Hill is a is a African American community that's targeted for gentrification, and the Cherry Hill Development Corporation has been compromised, and they have partnered in uh, various ways and various situations with outside developers to promote gentrification. So uh, we like to see this deal tabled, and. Um, at best re-offered as a RFP to local developers from the Cherry Hill community or African-American developers. Um, so we can, um, we need um, an effort by the administration, by the council and, and the mayor to include African-Americans in the redevelopment of Cherry Hill and not the exclusion of us in the redevelopment of Cherry Hill. That's it. Thank you so much, Mr. Prince, for your testimony. Um, from the board, are there any questions or concerns regarding Mr. Prince's testimony? Yes. Uh, Mr. Comptroller, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Mr. Prince. Good morning. Um, have you uh, had any conversations with uh, your council person about this uh, development project? No, not this particular um, development project. We had conversations about other issues out Cherry Hill, but um, this came through some local developers that have been cut out of the redevelopment plan in Cherry Hill. Okay, but I, I'm, I'm just ch checking in to see whether you are aware of whether your your council person is supportive of this project uh the the board agenda is shared with the council members and um we have we have not received uh, a complaint or a concern from uh, the council person for this district about this project um i don't really understand the question are you asking me is the council person's um, interest or opinion greater than the residents of Cherry Hill? Well, technically the council person's interest or opinion is supposed to be representative of the constituents in Cherry Hill. Um, my, my, I guess my only question for you, and you have already answered it, is you haven't um, had a conversation about this with the council person. Um, what I was just informing you of is, we haven't gotten a similar complaint or concern from your council person. Um, and that's usually how we know that there is a disconnect between a uh, project that the city is moving forward with and the wishes of the community. Um, but uh, this project, as um, uh, Ms. Amato shared, is, uh, is, is being developed by the Cherry Hill uh, 
Community Development Corporation, and um, it's consistent with the uh, master plan that the community itself developed three years ago. Um, so that's what we're working off of um, in, in terms of why uh, this, this, this project is coming to the board at this time. Yes, yes. Okay. And, um, uh, I, you know, I want to explain this without being offensive to people that hold political office, but um, uh, normally in situations where redevelopment and there's a lot of uh, money involved, um, the, the, the opinion of the residents of um, a lot of African-American communities that are gentrified are not heard. Um, but in this particular instance, um, the residents are prepared to initiate litigation if um, their voice is not heard in this particular deal. Okay, I guess my only other question, Mr. President, is, Mr. Prince, are you speaking um, on behalf of an organized community association, or are you speaking um, and presenting this to us as an individual? Um, as a person that is a, a part of a collective, a loose collective of residents who are developers, proven developers, and who are being starved out and offered um, deals by um, corporations such as Enterprise that um, that is targeted my um, oh, uh, Cherry Hill for gentrification. And um, we, we're just not going to take it anymore. Okay, thank you very much. At this time, are there thank any you. additional questions or concerns for Mr. Prince? Mr. Prince, thank you. If you could please uh, stay on the line uh, as we continue to uh, talk about this. I guess from uh, some of the concerns that Mr. Prince has raised, is there a minority participation goal uh, built into this deal? I don't know if yeah. the LTA has a specific, that would happen with the actual onset the, of the project. The actual agreement. Yeah. Okay. Do we know the development? Do do we know the developers tied into this particular project? Yes, the development team is headed by CHCD, but yeah, but who are the actual developers? Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. It's a joint venture between Elevate Baltimore Inc., Elevate Baltimore City Community College, and CHDC. Got it. Uh, is there any uh, minority uh, equity in this deal? I don't know. Okay, so I think Mr. Prince raises some uh, really important uh, concerns. Um, you know, obviously, you know, we want to continue to see the growth of our city forward. Uh, we know that Cherry Hill couldn't be more of a symbolic representation of the disproportionate amount of disinvestment uh, that the city, state, and federal government has applied to black communities all across this country, but a symbolic representation of it here in the city of Baltimore. We also understand and know that Cherry Hill uh, is some um, sought after real estate, uh, you know, butting up against uh, some of the only last remaining uh, areas of waterfront uh, in the city of Baltimore. Um, I think Mr. Prince, uh, how he's maybe not here representing um, an organization, uh, but as a concerned citizen, I think it's important uh, for this board to ensure that we do our due diligence, uh, that we are not uh, continuing to uh, further um, um, propel the residual effects of the discriminatory real estate practices that the city of Baltimore has been engaged in uh, since the inception of our city. Uh, with that, I'm going to ask that we defer. I will be interested in understanding and knowing what the minority participation is in this LDA. Um, who are the partners? Uh, what are the requirements for local hiring associated for this particular project? If there's any minority uh, equity uh, that's a, that's uh, intended or a goal that's tied into this particular deal. Um, I, I think something was put out there, I'm not sure how true it is, but uh, if this was not done from an RFP process, why do we decide not to do it uh, from an RFP process? So um, I'm going to ask the board that we defer this um, uh, to two meetings so I can better understand and get some additional information. Uh, so I'll put that out there as a motion. So moved. Second. There's a motion on the floor to defer. It's, it's, uh, it's been, um, Second. 
Is, uh, is a motion uh, and it's been properly second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. Uh, the ayes have it. Mr. Prince, uh, uh, that's exactly what this board is here to do, uh, to allow citizens to come, um, provide and point out concerns. Um, Mr. Uh, Comptroller, he, you were a, a council member at a time. Uh, we don't know where the council members' uh, uh, support is on this particular thing. Uh, what I will say is, you know, council members don't necessarily read all 200 or 300 pages of Board of Estimates uh, to kind of pinpoint uh, what's directly impacting their district. So I think it's important, particularly for deals like this, is a really large deal. Um, obviously, the appraisal value is based off of this current condition, uh, not what hit the future value would be. Uh, the $32 million investment is great. Um, and then when we talk about things of up to 80%, what does that really look like? Right now, we're really engaged on inclusionary housing and affordable housing, particularly in a community like this. So when we say up to 80%, what is really the mixed income that we're going to get out of a building like this? So those are the types of questions that, you know, we're going to continue to ask. Mr. Prince, again, thank you for uh, participating in, uh, in today. Uh, agenda if you could continue to follow if you have any additional follow-up or questions or concerns or commentary that you would like to provide to the board uh, please do so through the um, through the comptroller's office you can also reach out to my office as well so thank you so much mr. Prince uh, and thank you to um, madam Celeste uh, madam uh, uh, clerk slash Real estate. <laughs> Acting real estate officer. <laughs> real estate officer uh, but this item will be deferred Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. And I thank you and the board for the protection of our community. No, thank you so much for uh, for coming and present to us today. Uh, uh, are there any additional questions or concerns? Mr. President, did we say we were deferring that to the fifth? I said two two meetings. I'm not sure. Thank you. So uh, I was not inclusive of our special meeting. Yeah, that's, the, that's where we have to be careful. So be the second yeah, just to May. give us some time to work through and make sure we provide the community with follow-up questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so that's uh, just for the record, uh, talking to the, the Madam Clerk, we, we're going to do it for two meetings, uh, not including uh, next week's meeting, which is a special meeting associated uh, with the budget. Uh, are there any additional questions, concerns, comments? Okay. Um, seeing there's no additional uh, business before the desk, um, we will adjourn. The next regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Estimate will occur on Wednesday, April the 26th at 9 a.m., uh, which will spe specifically focus on fiscal year 2024 it's preliminary special, budget. It's a, special it's a special meeting, yeah. I would like to thank everyone for tuning in. Did I say it right? I'm good, Madam Solicitor. Oh, I thought you said the regularly scheduled. Oh, yeah, it's a special. Okay, she's the 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 the, the, the law school uh, in um, <laughs> is uh, is is uh, is word smithing me. So I said regularly scheduled. It's important to say special schedule. So it's not on the regularly scheduled list. This is a special meeting, again, um, to go over fiscal year 2024 preliminary budget. So remember, that's next April. That's next Wednesday, April the 26th at 9 a.m. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. We truly appreciate you. Baltimore, we love you. but not video so i don't see it coming up hey tv 25. Hmm? testing Should, do we need to click the webex button over there because there's nothing on the screen like it's not open normally i see a black screen and just nothing's happening until they make us go live. I don't know. Okay. Let's move to the hold screen and the mics are off. Uh, Double click WebEx. Oh shit, what's that? I don't know. Okay, they can hear us and see us again. We can't see at all that we're on, that we're okay. live. But they can. Okay. Thank you to Mara James and BBMR for their technical support. <laughs> Just one of the many hats that Mara wears. <laughs> okay, so we can't see ourselves. <laughs> so we don't know that we're on camera, but we're told we are. So we're going to get started today, folks. Um, we have a live audience today. Thanks, gentlemen, for being so patient with us as we get ourselves organized for the bid opening this morning. 
Um, welcome to the Board of Estimates bid opening for April 19th, 2023. I am joined by three of my lovely and talented colleagues who will be helping us smoothly move through the bid opening process today. I'm Celeste Amato, clerk to the Board of Estimates. And I have a few addenda to share first before we get started with openings. We have a few opening date changes. Department of General Services, GS16810RR, Mitchell Courthouse roof replacement was initially due today, but it will now be opened on May 3rd, 2023. Bureau of Procurement, RFQ000126, Charter Bus Transportation Services, originally due today, will now be opened on May 3rd, 2023. And Bureau of Procurement, RFQ000178, on-site preventative maintenance and inspection for heavy duty and medium vehicles and equipment originally due today, will now be opened on May 10th, 2023. We have eight bids to open today, and up first is the Department of General Services, contract GS21831, Reisterstown Road, Library Branch number 31, ramp replacement. Oh, this is it. And I am turning to my colleague Casey, who's doing the reading today for us for the first <laughs> respondent to this bid. Um, for the first respondent, we have CNN Associates, LLC. Their address is 6920 Hillmead Road, Glendale, Maryland, 20769. Mm -hmm. and, and is this a lump sum? So we'll have totals? This is a... Found the bond. This is a bond. This might have a bond. It has a bid bond. Yeah. Bid. So I'm reading that. Okay. Yes. Um, the total is 444000 Um, Sorry. $824. Okay. I'm going to read that number back to you. Um, usually to verify, Casey, I do digit by digit. Okay. And that also lets everybody who's listening and record the number more accurately, we hope. So I heard 444,824.00 as the bid amount. That is correct. And then Audrey always confirms that because she has the copies. That's correct. And we have a bid bond for this item. Mm -hmm. Cool. Got it. And do we have any other bidders? One more. Thank you. You're doing a fine job, by the way. Uh, this is from Monumental Paving and Excavating, Inc. The address is 1815 Edison Highway, mm -hmm. Baltimore, Maryland, 21213. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, oh, just, oh, one there. $693,950 and no cents for their bid bond. Okay, that, with a bid bond. For the bid bond. Thank Apologies. you. Apologies. That number was 693,950.00. Okay. Okay, and then this is the part where I believe that was our last bidder for that item. So I read back out loud to all who are listening the bidders and their numbers so that folks can keep tabs. So we had two bidders for GS21831, CNN Associates LLC for $448,824 and Monumental Paving and Excavating Inc. for $693,950. Next, we have a uh, solicitation for the Department of Transportation, contract TR23003, footway repair citywide. And Casey right. will share our first bidder. Our first bidder is J Villa Construction Incorporated. Their address is 7971 Dorsey Run Road in Jessup, Maryland, 20794. This As okay. this has a, a 
Oh, there it is. Got it. All right, and the total bid for this one is seven hundred and seventy thousand dollars. Okay, that number was seven seven zero comma zero 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 point zero zero. Yeah. Okay. And there no bond. There's no bond bid, with this. Bid bond, right on. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, that sounds like an There's amount that would normally okay. ask for a bond. Okay. And we have a second bidder. Yes. Um, and Casey, you don't have to read the um, address because okay. Shalon has recorded those already on the tab sheets for me. So unless there's somebody that hasn't, um, we couldn't read their address on the external envelope. Okay. I would ask you if it's missing, so don't worry about reading that. Okay. The next one is, ah, here they are. Um, Santos Construction Company. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and they this one has a bid bond. Mm -hmm. The amount is one million four hundred and ninety five thousand dollars and one hundred and thirty five sorry one one hundred thirty nine dollars thirty dollars. I'm gonna read it to you. It's one million <laughs> four hundred ninety five uh huh one hundred and thirty thousand thirty. Okay, got it. Okay, I'm gonna repeat that back. That was one comma four nine five comma one three zero point zero zero. Yes. If my yes. second grade teacher yes. is watching this, I'm so sorry, yes. Miss Gray. That's okay. You can work on that before your next performance. <laughs> so, do we have any other bidders for this item? Just those two. Okay. So that was contract number TR two three zero zero three, and we had two bids received. J Villa Construction, $770,000, and Santos Construction Company, Inc., $1,495,130. Yes. Okay. Up next, Department of Transportation, contract number TR23002, Footway Repair Citywide. And our first bidder is? Our first bidder and this may sound familiar to frequent viewers, is J Villa Construction. This has a bid bond. Of $21,974.60. Sorry, it's a lump sum. So can you go to page 93? It should be 787. Yeah, that sounds like a oh, very sorry. small total. Oh, oh Paul, thank you, oh. everyone. It's okay. Um, this is $787,100. Yes. Okay, I'm going to repeat that number back. Thank you. 787, comma, 100.00. That's correct. Right? Okay. Yes. Yes, and, and I recorded that as having a bid yeah. bond. Mm -hmm. yeah. And... Up next, yep. um, Santos Construction Company. Mm -hmm. This amount is. Make sure that's the furthest guy. Yep. That's not mine. One million four hundred sixty four thousand. Three hundred and fifty-five dollars and zero cents. Okay, that number was one comma four six four comma three five five point zero zero. Correct. And we have a bid bond. Yes. Okay, so that was uh, contract number TR two three zero zero two, J Villa Construction seven hundred eighty-seven thousand one hundred dollars, and Santos Construction Company. One million four hundred sixty four thousand three hundred and fifty five dollars. Up next, we have a solicitation for Department of Transportation TR two three zero zero one footway repairs citywide. And our bidders are Casey. Um, once again, it's going to be a J Villa construction. Mm -hmm. We have a bid bond. And the amount is, make sure that's right, $914,000. Okay, that number was 914,000.00.00. Mm -hmm. Audrey says yes. Yes, with a big bond. 
Yes, and a bid bond. And we have a bid bond. And we have a second bidder? Yes, we have one more bidder. Santos. Thank you. Uh, the second bidder is Santos Construction Company. And we have a We have a bid bond, and the total bid is one million six hundred and twenty-six thousand seven hundred and five dollars zero cents. That number was one comma six two six comma seven zero five point zero zero. Correct. And a bid bond. Thank you. Thank you. Is that our final bid for that? Yes. Item? Okay, are we have two bidders for contract number TR23001, J Villa Construction, $914,000, and Santos Construction Company, Inc., $1,626,705. Up next, this uh, solicitation is for the Bureau of Procurement, RFQ000197. This is for the maintenance repair and installation service for electronic security system all right so we have one bid from ces integrated solutions mm -hmm. and the total bid price on this one is four hundred and four hundred thousand and four or five one five zero once again so sorry can, can you say four zero five comma one five zero Okay, I'm gonna repeat that number back to you. Four zero five comma one five zero point zero zero. That's correct. And was this did this look like a capital? Did it require a bond? Um it's not it's not a capital. Okay. I'm just checking. Yeah, so um you are about to hear us say we're gonna be referring this particular bid to the law department only because we think it was advertised with um a there might have been a typo in the ad so that the bid number that was advertised doesn't match the bid number that's in our system. So out of an abundance of caution, we're just gonna refer this to law department first. But I will repeat the um, contract number in our system is RFQ 000197. And we have received a bid from CES Integrated Solutions for $405,000, $405,000, Casey, you maybe do that, $405,150. Shalon, I'm also letting you know that this particular page, we have to fix the formatting for the column. It's not changing it to currency. Just wanted to give you a heads up. And it's a, we, it probably in making a new page, it just didn't pick up the formatting before we post it online later. Um, up next, we have a solicitation for Bureau of Procurement, RFQ 000122. Contract name is Early Intervention System. This is a price opening. And we have the following price proposals to share. We have two um, price proposals to share. The first one is Benchmark, Solu Benchmark Solutions, LLC, or doing business as uh, Benchmark Analytics. And is this a total or an itemized? This is. I, I, uh, appearingly itemized. Okay. Yeah. So if it's itemized. itemized, we don't read the itemized numbers. We only read when we have totals. Okay. So this is a price proposal itemized that we will refer to the agency for their detail review. The second uh, proposal we ha price proposal we have is from Quartech USA. Mm -hmm. um, and this is an itemized. Quartech, yeah. you want me to spell that? You do not need to. I have it already. Yeah. So we have um, two price proposals for RFQ 000122. The first from Benchmark Analytics and the second from Quartech USA LTD. 
And both of these will be referred to the agency for their detailed review of the itemized proposals. Mm -hmm. Up next, for Bureau of Procurement, we have RFQ 000130, sodium bisulfites. Sounds like something important, so I hope we have bids. N.A. Sorry, that's a, that's it. That's a table joke. Um, we have one bidder from PVS Chemical Solutions, Inc. And this has this itemized or is that the part? Okay. Um, the total is uh, one million one comma zero six eight comma zero zero zero. I can't think about it. <laughs> that number. I'm getting nervous in front of these. I know, it's a lot of pressure to I be know. the reader. I know. <laughs> one comma zero six eight comma zero 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 point zero zero. And that was our only bidder for RFQ 000130, sodium bisulfites. The bidder was PVS Chemical Solutions, Inc. for $1,068,000. Up next, we have for Bureau of Procurement, RFQ 000163, Residential Water and Sewer Program. And... Our and we have one bidder for this. Oh, thank you. HomeServe USA Corporation. And they have brought to us a I didn't see anything. I'm looking at that. So She's going to read the name. Of the okay, that's there's, right. there's no total or anything to share. It's just a proposal to provide coverage, right? Yeah. So. This there is. It doesn't appear to. There's a sort of a detail of itemized costs related to providing okay, this it. kind of coverage. So the name of the bidder is HomeServe USA Corp. We'll be referring this to the agency for. A more detailed review and again this was for RFQ 000163 residential water and sewer program and this was the bidder was HomeServe USA Corp and I believe that was our last bid correct okay so that was our last opening for today we generally um, post our results to the Office of the Comptroller website by close of business sometimes even sooner so please look there if you'd like to see more details for the items that were opened today. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Our next opening is May 3rd. Is that right, Audrey? Yes. Uh -huh. Our next opening is um, after a regularly scheduled board meeting on May 3rd, 2023. Thanks everyone.